love lives here. Let's come together in consciousness for a moment and say our focus statement together. We embolden people to live their highest potential through the transformative power of love. This morning we are blessed with not one, but two speakers. And one is, is very special because she was, for those of us who have been here more than a minute, a very dear friend of Reverend Lee, our former senior minister, and that would be Reverend Veronica. She's been a science of mind practitioner since 2003 and became a licensed minister in October of 2020. She completed her master's degree in spiritual consciousness from the Holmes Institute of Consciousness Studies in 2021. She is a staff minister at Namaste Center for Spiritual Living in Long Beach, California, Ooh, my hometown. Veronica is a strong believer in the power of prayer, and she loves praying with people and seeing the results of prayer manifest as life itself. Veronica has been sober for the past 26 years and takes life on one day at a time. She also is very proud of becoming a registered nurse 14 years ago at the age of 44. So you, now you can figure out how old she is. <laughs> she served as the charge nurse on the COVID unit in 2020 and 2021. It was the most challenging time that Veronica has faced on her science of mind journey. She could not have made it without her meditation practice and many spiritual tools she's picked up along the way. Her favorite things to do are pray, meditate, snow ski, la and laugh with her friends and family. Veronica's motto, when you can see God in everyone and everything, life becomes magical. And our other speaker this morning is Jesse Keeler. Jesse is a ministerial intern, and he is licensed to pray through the Center for Spiritual Living. He's completed his practitioner studies in 2020 and is currently a member of Namaste CSL in Long Beach. Jesse serves, as the, com serves the community in a variety of ways, including facilitating a weekly morning spiritual practice call, providing prayer, knowing the divine wholeness of individual congregants, in addition to spiritual coaching for his clients. He believes in the oneness of all creation and the vital importance of caring for our earth. Yay! <laughs> Since 2018, he has led the Order of the Sacred Earth Orange County, which promotes developing personal connection with our earth through spiritual practices to become the best lovers and protectors of the planet that we can be. In the fall of 2022, he started ministerial studies at the Center for Spiritual Living and is taking this new path of his spiritual journey one course at a time. Jesse loves exploring his relationship with the world and his place in the cosmos. He is fascinated by how thought shapes the way a person experiences life. You can read some of his musings on his blog, growingedgebeing.com. That's growingedgebeing.com. We might be able to put that on the website. So please join me in giving a warm Riverside welcome to Reverend Veronica and practitioner Jesse. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. So glad to be here. I'm going to hand off to Jesse. We're going to tag team today, but we are so blessed to be here. Thank you. And I'm just setting up the timer here so that we don't go over. <laughs> Thank you very much for inviting myself and Reverend Veronica to spend the summer with you. It's a great honor, a great honor to uh, step in and uh, fill in for Rev. Jeff, and I know that's a tall order. Um, this summer, we're going to be exploring the 15 commitments of conscious leadership. Has Who here has actually gotten the book and maybe looking at it? All right. I see, I see a couple of hands go up. This is an awesome book. And I'm really, I was really excited to read it. Mm -hmm. I was really impressed with it. And you might be saying, look, I'm not a leader. Why are we reading a book about leadership? We're all leaders. Wherever you stand, wherever you're coming from, 
step into your leadership, and that's what this is about. Because as each of us steps into our leadership, from wherever we are, from wherever, whoever we are, we can uplift not only ourselves, but our community and bring this message of love out into the world. So, uh, Jocelyn, do you have that first commitment up? All right. So, today we're going to be talking about taking radical responsibility. Commitment number one. Don't worry, we're going to come to this at the end. So, I just want you to pay attention for a moment. I commit to taking full responsibility for the circumstances of my life and for my physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. I commit to supporting others to take full responsibility for their lives. Just take that in. We'll come back to that later. But Veronica? Yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, come on. Come on up. I'm come ready. Up. <laughs> well, first of all, that that is a powerful, powerful commitment. It really, it really... Um, creates freedom is what it does is what i see it is as creating freedom in our life how about you absolutely you know the idea of taking responsibility when i was um or when i'm in my victim consciousness because even though i'm working my way out of that it still shows up in different parts of my life mm -hmm. Responsibility just felt like a weight, something heavy on my shoulders. Right. And what I, when I came into this teaching, what I realized is I have to take responsibility for myself to progress, and that's something that this teaching requires all of us to do. Yeah. Sometimes we think of responsibility kind of like our chores, right? Everybody remember their parents saying, okay, did you do responsibilities? You know, it feels like a weight. So taking I definitely, out the trash. Right, taking out the trash. That was your, your gig. I had to do the dishes. So, And so we feel like there's a resistance to it because we have that, you know, that mindset from the past about what responsibility is. But it's actually quite the opposite. And I'm just going to unpack that word responsibility. Okay. You like that? So... Just think about that word responsibility for a moment. And stepping outside of the weight of it, just let's put that aside for a moment. What has come to me to me is to be a, the ability to respond. So as I take on personal responsibility for my life, for what comes out of my mouth, for the actions in my life, I become more able to respond within the circumstances of my life. Yes. And I want to remind us, um, I'm sure uh, Reverend Jeff spoke about this last week, about above the line and below the line. And so we're talking about above the line responses and uh, being in victim and blame would be below the line responses. And, not, and, and our mind wants to say better, worse. We're human. So these are options, you know, that as a human being that we have to choose from. And so sometimes we are above the line and we can stay conscious and aware. And sometimes we go below the line into blame and victim consciousness. So I don't want it to come from a place of um, perfection for any recovering perfectionists out there. Um, we can just know that it's a journey and some days are better than others. Just uh, someone recently said to me, some days, you know, you wake up and you you're maybe at like 50, 60% of who you can be, and that's really like your 100% for that day. For the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and, and honoring that, honoring that that's who you are today, and, and the, next, the next moment could be different, right? The next moment, yeah. So a little bit about, also a reminder about the core teachings of this book is remembering our the to me consciousness where external things are responsible for my happiness or my unhappiness. So that's the to me consciousness. Then there's the by me consciousness where I'm creating with, I'm choosing curiosity 
and learning opposed to defensiveness or being right. That's the by me consciousness. And the through me consciousness is that we're co I'm co-creating through me together. We're co-creating together. And then the as me is creating from a place of oneness where um, oneness as a direct experience, and not many are at the place to create from the as me, because you are in direct experience and living from that place. That's ultimately our goal, and these are steps towards it. So to get above the line. To stay to above the line. So to the allow spirit to work through us, mm -hmm. as us. Mm -hmm. Right. So to me is victim consciousness. Mm -hmm. By me is kind of that manifestation, like the right. the, 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 calf, the the green lights and the parking spaces. Kind parking of. spaces, yep. <laughs> if, if everybody, most people are familiar with that in here. I yeah. like parking space. Yeah, how many, how many of us came into the teaching with that? <laughs> so taking it to the next level and really this idea of being responsible, taking on personal responsibility is what allows us to go deeper. Mm -hmm. Um, I, w I was telling Rev. Veronica that um, I was recently asked to be on a hiring committee at, at, my, at my job. And during the interview process, I realized I'm, I'm making these judgments. I'm thinking, what's this thing about pronouns? And are they gender appropriate? And I'm just having this little chatter go on in the back of my head. And I realized the very reason they had asked me to be on this committee is because I would be aware of that chatter and not pass a judgment on, uh, based on that chatter I have in my head. So my ability to be able to respond and to listen to myself and listen to that chatter allows me to be more fully present and engaged in my life. Hmm. That's a beautiful example of taking responsibility for the chatter without you know, because we can go into blame too, right? We can go into blame and shame and why did I think that and I should, you know, blame is really a, a powerful, powerful um, tool um, that we sometimes use and it's fueled by fear. It's fueled by fear. When we think something is happening in this world that shouldn't be happening, whether it's you're running late and you're getting all the red lights, you know, and that shouldn't be happening, um, you know, or whatever. If you think about something in your life right now that shouldn't, you, th you think, oh, that shouldn't be that way. That's where we set ourselves up for fear because as soon as the body thinks something's wrong, our fight or flight engages in the body. We go into fear. And when we're in fear, we want, we want to find um, who's the cause of it. And so we blame situations. We blame people. We blame life itself sometimes, and most importantly, we blame ourselves. We use blame against ourselves because when we go into fear, maybe some of you, you know, the way you, that we're brought up, we had a hard parent or somebody who always said, you should know better than that, you should have done better than that, it wasn't perfect. So then we internalize that and blame ourselves, and we forget that we are made in the image and likeness of God because we also have, we are made in the image and likeness of God, but sometimes we forget. And so when it comes to taking responsibility, um, there's, there's, no, there's, uh, there's a space in life where we can go with, with no blame. Where can we find the place within us where there's no blame? sit with that for a minute. If you could think of a circumstance, just pick one in your life right now where maybe perhaps you've been blaming the circumstances or a person or a situation and you think about that and what if you thought about that and you re were able to remove the blame and just sit with that situation with no blame. With Veronica, I had a question. Yes. Because this came up because in our teaching, we also talk about accepting things the way they are and mm -hmm. the way they're not. Mm -hmm. How does that idea of, what does that really mean to accept it? To take, how do I stand in responsibility, mm -hmm. accept something that I don't think is right, that isn't serving people, that isn't good for people? Mm -hmm. What does that mean to accept that? 
Yeah, that's really that's a really big question because there is a lot going out on in this world, right? That I and we think that acceptance means that I agree. And that if I'm taking responsibility for something that I agree with it. But that's not what we're saying. We can take responsibility and accept something just the way it is and just the way it is not, as Jesse said. And it doesn't mean I agree with it. As a matter of fact, it can mean I absolutely disagree with it. But this is what is. Um, I can see her face. Loving what is. Thank you. Yes, loving what is. And what is in why, I love this question, I think it's Thich Nhat Hanh. Why are you arguing with reality? It's already so. It already is. So what are, what the question is, what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do about it? Well, I think the, the first is just take a breath, right? <laughs> like, whoa, that's a lot. What, whatever it might be going on, you take a breath. And how can I question? How can I get curious about what's going on so I can bring myself to a level of acceptance? Okay, this is the way it is. I might not like it, but I'm not going to argue with reality. This takes a lot of my energy. And so then we move from the acceptance to being responsible, like, okay, this is how it is. And as much as I want to blame, like, so, Jesse's just stepped on my toe. Right? <laughs> it's his fault. I'm in pain. What, so instead of blaming, I just, what happened is that my toe got stepped on. I'm in pain. But if I don't, I can not blame you even though it occurred the blame is the blame is the t fear the toxic energy this is what so he stepped on my foot so i can i can have the experience i can feel the pain of the experience mm -hmm. but i don't have to blame anything else because that's a distraction from the experience that i'm having right and that's taking me out of the moment Mm -hmm. And it's disempowering me, in a sense. Yes. Because when we blame, we give our power away. Because then someone else or something else is in control of our happiness. And who wants that? Yeah. So, Reverend Veronica, when we were talking about responsibility, uh, we talked about turning down his homes and seeing what he had to say about responsibility. Mm. And what we both discovered is at least in what we could find, that Ernest Holmes did not ever directly tell us to be personally responsible. Right? He's implicit in the teaching. It's just kind of in the teaching that you're going to take responsibility. And what he was saying, though, that when we connect with spirit, when we connect with source, the responsibility for the healing, we let go. We let God. Can I read that? Yes, yes. So this is from uh, this thing called you. Chapter 9. Lift the load of personal responsibility by transferring it to the law of perfect action. No matter what confronts you, what obstructions appear, or what undesirable situations exist in your experience, this law can dissolve them. So this is really about Having, creating this awareness and allowing spirit to do the work. It doesn't mean that I'm not taking action. Right. It's not that I'm just sitting back and letting things happen to me because that would be playing the victim again. Right. But it's creating that open channel, that open doorway to allowing spirit to work through me as me. Yes. And once again, it's, we're not talking about perfection here because, you know, I'll be honest, sometimes being a victim, I just sit in that, you know, I just sit there and like, yep, they did that to me. <laughs> I'll stew in it for a little while, right? But there has, there comes a point, that does not bring, that does not bring me happiness. That does not bring me freedom. That does not bring me the, the connection with God that I'm seeking. So how, if, uh, in, in my spiritual practice, that is my goal, to be in close conscious awareness of God in my life. So if that means, okay, who, okay, I have to let go of this victim, what can I replace it with? You know, how can I let go of that? And it's just being responsible with 
about our lives and saying, okay, I don't appreciate what's happening, but I'm not going to blame anyone. And that leaves an open field. Can you feel that? When you take that off, blame, it leaves an open, like, canvas to create. Should we come back to uh, seeing if anybody's ready to take this radical responsibility, make a commitment? Yeah, I just want to say, I just wanted to read a couple of quotes from the book because I really, uh, really appreciated these. Well, if there was no way the world should or shouldn't be, what if the world just shows up the way the world shows up? What if the great opportunity of life isn't in trying to get the world to be a certain way, but rather in learning from whatever the world gives us. That's the being curious. Because I know that I, you know, we all are guilty of should because that's what we're taught from our conditioning about how the world should be and how someone should be and how my spouse should be and how my kids should be. There's a lot of shoulds. And when they don't measure up whoever they are, it causes me to be unhappy and me to resist what is so. So don't be shooting on yourself. Do not be shooting on yourself. I say that very carefully. <laughs> and lastly, from the book as well, from the 15 conscious um, agreements, what if, what if what happens is not a neutral experience, but rather a custom ordered curriculum for our highest development as people on this earth? Custom ordered by who? <laughs> For our highest learning and our highest unfoldment and our high, pulling from us our ability to love something that we don't want to. I can tell they're loving it over here. They're getting like some real joy out of that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so can you feel it? Can you feel it's pulling what it's pulling from you to, to rise to higher ground? to that above-the-line consciousness of responsibility. Yes. So we read it again, and then we'll Should go we into prayer. Okay. You ready for this? Yeah. For the commitment? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Do you want to push? If, if you're so inclined. Now, you don't. This is a commitment. So unless you're ready to take this commitment, you can just sit silent and listen to other people. But I encourage you to step up to this. And if you'd like to really deepen this practice, put your hand on your heart or take a prayerful, prayerful position in it. And let's read this together. I commit to taking full responsibility for the circumstances of my life and for my physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being. I commit to supporting others to take full responsibility for their, their lives. lives. Yes, and so, so it is. is. Yeah. And so it is. Let's go into prayer. Taking a deep breath in and releasing it all. And just connecting that source that resides everywhere in its entirety. And knowing that that source resides within each and every one of us right here and right now. Just feeling it, feeling it from the tips of your toes all the way up your legs, all the way up your torso, all the way filling each and every one of your cells. Ah, yes. Welcome home. And knowing that from this place of love, from this place of peace, from this place of joy and acceptance, I do now declare that wholeness is the order of the day wholeness, that as I am whole, I know and accept that all are whole in mind, in body, yes, feeling that through in the nas, each and every one of us right now, there is no place for anything other than God to be operating in and as our life right now, I accept this, I accept this, and for anyone who may be having a hardship in life right now, I accept the grace of God operating right now in as and through the hardship and through and as the person, any person experiencing it. I accept the grace of God right now. 
Mm. Ooh, and as we tune in to the love of God, mm, 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 that means the love of self. That means the love of self. I'm feeling that love of self right here as the truth of the moment. I feel it. I download it. I accept it. And I release it out into the world knowing that it will come back to me tenfold. Yes, indeed. As I share my love with the world, I receive more love. Amen to that. So as we all take a collective breath together, Slowly letting it out, releasing it all into the universe that only says yes. We all say together, and so it is. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. We look forward to sharing the summer with you, and thank you for having us as a guest. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Riverside. Thank you.